Hey guys and gals, Mama Bear here with the Daily Dash of Life. Today I will be giving a tutorial on an intermediate crochet pattern called the 10 Stitch Blanket, written by Didri Oos. She actually converted it from a knitting pattern by Frankie Brown. So I'm so grateful and thankful to them both. Thanks Didri, thanks Frankie. I will be reading the pattern out loud and I will also be adding in notes that I hope you will find helpful. So in the meantime, get your stuff together and don't forget your 12 gallon cup of tea because you will need it. You need to stay alert for this pattern and pay close attention. See you in a minute. I'm really excited about this video, but I also wanna make sure that I do it justice and make it easy for people to follow, especially for all the people out there who have so many questions on it. I've seen so many questions and comments on Didri's, um, on her forum for her pattern that I just knew I had to make a video for it because I didn't find it too difficult to do. Before we get started though, a few little side notes I want to add. One, you need to make sure that you're not sleepy in any way, shape, or form. This pattern is going to take all of your attention, all of your focus, so please do not get distracted in any way. And make sure you have your 12 gallon cup of tea close. And um, if wine will help you with that, keep your wine close. Or if a cold glass of water will help you stay alert, then have your cold glass of water. If you have your music, put your music on. Um, I would say pop in a movie but that might distract you. So music might be better. I have so many things um, that I wanna go over with you in preparation for this pattern that I had to jot a couple down. My second note is to read through your pattern closely several times before beginning. This is imperative because the pattern uh, jumps around a lot. She has diagrams that go with what she's talking about. So just get really familiar with the pattern. And also, if you could print it out, that would be best. Um, I didn't print mine out until recently for this um, tutorial. I had to do mine online and on my phone, and I did a lot of um, back and forth jumping around. So it might be easier for you just to print it out and then read along as it goes, and then you could flip through as you need to. Let's see, what else do I have here? The more you read it, the more you end up picking up things you didn't find last time. So you realize, oh, wait a minute. So this goes here, that goes there, that goes together. I'm supposed to go from here to there. It just makes it a lot easier the more you read the pattern. Feel free to pause this video now or any time during the tutorial. If you pause it now, you can give yourself time to go and read the pattern several times, get familiar with it. Like I said, that will be your best bet that's your first step to do. My third suggestion is to get very familiar with your diagrams. She has pictures and illustrations to try to help you through the process, so get familiar with those. When I first read the pattern, I thought I was looking at the correct diagram, but then the third time I read through the pattern, I realized, oh, no, I was not. So, you know, no wonder why I was so confused. So just get familiar with your diagrams. If you have to the run. numbers to go with those diagrams, let's see, row one goes with picture one, row two goes with picture two, or you know, anything like that, so on and so forth, then do that. By all means, do that. That's another really good thing about printing out the pattern is that you get to write on it. It's your pattern, you do what you want with it, and your notes make sense to you. So feel free to print it out and write notes. Also, Create a checklist to keep track of your work in the beginning. It's the trickiest part. So your checklist should be as follows. First square, ending corner, beginning corner, ending corner, which she um, writes in as subsequent ending corner, beginning corner, which happens to be the subsequent beginning corner, middle section, ending corner, beginning corner and repeat at middle section after that. And as we go through, it'll make more sense. 
Each middle section will be followed by an ending corner and then a beginning corner. I have a couple of diagrams. Well, Didri has one diagram. So here's your first square. Then work an ending corner. The green is going to be your ending corner. And then the pink is going to be your beginning corner. Again, the green is your ending corner. Then you do a beginning corner. Then your middle section. Ending corner, beginning corner, and so on and so forth. Okay, so how that looks in the diagram is going to be first square, ending corner, beginning corner, ending corner, beginning corner, and your first middle section. Okay. Then it just slowly begins to grow. Here's your, let's see how to, this way. Starting here with your first square. This will be your ending corner, which I actually flopped these on accident. Ending corner, beginning, ending, beginning, middle section, ending, beginning, middle section, ending, beginning, middle section, ending, beginning, middle section, ending, beginning, middle section ending, beginning, middle section. And like I said, the very beginning is gonna be the trickiest part because you have to do so many back-to-back -back corners. And that's why you need that 12 gallon cup of tea. And I will be coordinating the yarn with the illustration as I'm doing the pattern and the tutorial, but feel free to just use one color. I would hate for you in the learning process to be switching colors because that will be more difficult for you. You need to wait till you're really, really used to the pattern. Um, you're more at ease with it, but do not, I would not suggest to start changing colors at this point. And neither will Didri. She even put in the pattern for you not to change colors at this time. My fifth piece of advice is to keep the big picture in mind and think of what you are trying to achieve. The big picture you want to keep in mind when you're doing this is that your corners are not only meant to turn your work, but think of it as forming this little square right here. Together they're going to form a square. Your midsections are going to be your straightaways. So try to keep your square in line as much as possible. It's not gonna be a perfect pattern. It's not gonna perfectly align all the time. So do not beat yourself up and try to and make yourself crazy if everything doesn't align up perfectly. But try your hardest to make these squares create a square. And then in the beginning, your midsections are going to create squares and then they're just gonna create long rectangles. Keep that in mind. My last note is to make sure that your tension isn't too tight. Try to keep everything flush. You just want to basically place your stitch where it belongs. You don't want to force it or anything because there are places where you're going to be trying to use a certain stitch and if you have too much tension on your work, you're not going to be able to use that stitch. And you'll know more what I'm talking about during the tutorial and I'll explain it during that time. but you do not want too much tension. And not only is it going to make it easier for you to work through your stitches, but it's just going to look nicer. Your work isn't going to curl and it just looks pretty. So I have this one. I'm going to be using several diagrams. This is my first diagram. This will be my second diagram. And then lo and behold, here is my third and final diagram. And you can see that I don't even have to use blocking in order for them to be nice. And that's simply because I don't use too much tension. I used to use a lot of tension on my work, but after working on this pattern and seeing that 
it just makes life easier when I don't use too much tension and it makes it look nicer, I stop doing that. Okay, so let me put these away for now. You, of course, will need your hook, hooks, whichever ones you decide. Please try not to change hooks throughout this process because the gauge is different. Try not to change yarns because the weight's going to be different. You need your scissors for those advanced who are have already been doing this for a couple of times already. When you want to change colors, tapestry needle. But for everyone, I would suggest getting some stitch markers. Stitch markers and stitch markers and more stitch markers. I just got these little cheapy ones, but I love them actually. They don't pull or snag my yarn. And they have these little snaps that I can choose to snap or not. And I don't know if they're, they're silicone or plastic, but they're very smooth, which I love. Now I'm just like always searching for these. And they come in this neat little thing. Grab your yarn. I'm using Karen Sim Simply Soft. This one is great. But as you can see, I also have this strawberry color, this green, I'm not, I don't remember what this green's called, and this turquoisey color. So those are the colors I'm using so that I can illustrate, I mean, so that I can go along with this illustration. Let's see. I'm sorry this seems so long-winded. I just wanted to make sure you had all the information you needed prior to getting started. So now we will actually be starting the tutorial. Um, stretch, take a break, do whatever you need to do while I get set up again. Grab your 12 gallon cup of tea. Take a real big gulp. I'm going to try to do this video as seamless as possible. Hopefully I can do one straight shot without it, be too, without it being too overwhelming or too long. But I will also try to do an additional video of the same footage and split it up for those people. I know everyone learns differently. So for those of you who just want videos of certain sections, I will try to split that video up and do that as well. So part one, we'll probably do the prerequisite video, which is all of my notes, reading it over and over type thing. And then part one will be the middle section. Part two will be the ending corner. Part three will be the beginning corner and so on and so forth. As I previously mentioned, I was gonna be reading along with the pattern. So she, Didri has 10 stitch blanket crochet pattern. Look what I made dot net. This 10 stitch blanket pattern is a conversion of Frankie Brown's 10 stitch blanket knitting, crochet, uh, knitting pattern. I would like to thank Frankie for giving me permission to write the crochet version of her lovely blanket. This pattern is free, but if you would like to show your appreciation for Frankie and her designs, you are more than welcome to make a, a donation to the Children's Liver Disease Foundation through Frankie's Just Giving page. For those of you who have never seen or heard of the 10 stitch blanket, let me break it down for you. The 10 stitch blanket is worked in a spiral or rounds of rows around a central square of 10 stitches by 10 rows. Because you are slip stitching into the rows of each previous round or row, round of rows, you will notice a little interlocking pattern along each seam on the front of the blanket, as she shows in her picture. On the back of the blanket, the seam will be more prominent. Materials needed are gonna be your yarn and hook of your choice, but make sure you use the same yarn and hook for the whole blanket. Gauge is not important as such, but if you are going to use different thicknesses of yarn, you will need to work up your own gauge square and then adjust the hook accordingly when the swap yarn thickness, when you swap yarn thickness. If you do not do this, you're going to end up with one wonky looking blanket. She also adds to uh, drink loads of tea and a good television television series. I'm thinking the television series is more when you know what you're doing. Abbreviations, US terminology used, 
is going to be CH for your chain stitch, SL, ST for your slip stitch, SC for your single crochet, SC, INC for your single crochet increase, and SC, DEC for your single crochet decrease. Here is her symbols. And some notes that she added are, at the bottom of the post you will find printable re reference cards for the 10 stitch blanket crochet pattern. These cards do not contain the whole written out pattern. They contain instructions for each of the sections in a handy cutout, cut outable format so that you can print them. Cut them out and laminate them for quick reference. At the bottom she put the best place to change colors is on the outside edge of one of the middle sections. So at the end of one of the rows, that end in a chain one, the worst place to change color is right on the slip stitch edge. Don't do it. I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to change the colors for this pattern and also a tutorial on how I weave my, my ends in and out. I also wanted to make sure you remember for your materials to add your stitch markers. Those are going to be very important in the beginning. I still use them even now that I know what I'm doing. They just make things so much easier and smoother for me. But especially for everyone who needs to train their eye, get your stitch markers. The corners can be particularly tricky. So make sure you use your markers as long as you need to. One favor I'd like to ask from all of you is to please, please, please be patient as I am trying to get out as much information as I can to help you with this pattern. And some parts, even a lot of parts, just may end up being very slow so that I can show you really good images of what I'm doing throughout the tutorial. Okay, thank you. This page is on a diagram. And it says, below this pattern diagram, you will find instructions and photos for how to work each of these sections. If you get stuck with this pattern, please refer back to the diagram to see which section you should be working next. Square, ending corner, beginning, ending, beginning, and so on and so forth. This is basically a zoomed out diagram of your end goal. Okay. Page 7 of 15 reads, Please remember my warning about not changing yarn thickness. Hook size halfway through the blanket, unless you make very sure that the gauge will match what you have been doing up to this point. If it so happens that you don't have one of those little clay pots for the yarn, just use your tea kettle. That's what I always do. I don't have those cool nifty little things, so that's what I use. Time to drink up, buttercup. Instructions for the first square. Do your foundation chain, chain 11. This foundation chain does not count as a row and you will work over it when the time comes. You hear that? You will work over it when the time comes. Row one, single crochet in one loop only of the second chain from the hook and every chain across. Chain one and turn. Row two through 10, single crochet in each of the 10 stitches across. Chain one and turn. Now work an ending corner as instructed. Okay, and away we go. Begin by creating a slip knot using your favorite method. Once you have your slip knot, chain 11. Chain one. Chain two, chain three, chain four, chain five, chain six, chain seven, chain eight, chain nine, chain ten, and chain eleven. Now I have exactly eleven chains on my hook. Now that I have my eleven chains on my hook, I'm going to skip the first chain from the hook and insert my hook into the second one from the hook. Insert my hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over again, again, and pull through. And I have my first single crochet. Now this first 
foundation chain is not going to count. Okay, so let me undo this real quick because I want to add my marker right here before I get anything started. So again, I'm going to skip the first chain from the hook and go into the second, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. One single crochet. On to my second. Here's your first row. Now what I'm going to do is chain one and insert a stitch marker. It makes things so much easier for me to do it at this point. Next I'm going to turn my work and single crochet in the first single crochet and each one across. Yarn over pull through, yarn over pull through is my very first single crochet of row two. And go all the way across. Ten. Two rows. Again, I'm going to chain one and insert. My stitch marker. And turn my work. I will meet you back here once you have completed row 9 of 10 so that we can do row 10 together. First single crochet of the row of row 10. One. Two, three, and you can see how your square has been forming up, it's taking shape. Okay, here's my tenth one. And there's my square. You have just completed your first square. Yay! That was easy enough, wasn't it? Okay, now you're going to chain one again. And do not forget to put your marker. So for this, because we're about to start the ending corner, I will use blue. Let's just use blue. Okay. So pause here, take your break if you need your break, gather yourself. See you in a minute. Go to this paper. 
This is page 8 of 15, and this is going to be your ending corner instructions. So go grab that. Alrighty. We have our first square done. We have our 10 rows of 10. We just chained one, and now we're going to turn our work. The instructions say to begin our ending corner is single crochet two together. That's the very first thing we're supposed to be doing for row one. So here's my first single crochet right here. So here's my single crochet right there and that's where I'm going to insert my hook. Insert into there. Yarn over pull through and now I have two loops on my hook. I'm going to go into the next stitch this single crochet right here, insert my hook, yarn over, pull through. Now I have three loops on my hook. I'm going to yarn over, pull through all three of those, and that gives me my single crochet two together. Next it says single crochet in the next eight stitches, and that's all for row one. So let me single crochet one, single crochet two, single crochet three, single crochet four, single crochet five, single crochet six, single crochet seven, and single crochet eight. Okay, then you are going to chain one. And right here, because you single crocheted two together, which equals one single crochet, and then you had eight going across, that equals nine for this row. So for your first row of the ending corner, you will have nine stitches. Okay. Again, I'm going to chain one and turn. I'm going to add my stitch marker. Turn my work. Now, for row two, it says single crochet in the next seven stitches. That's the very first thing I need to do. After that, I need to single crochet two together. So let's work on the seven stitches first. Start with your first single crochet and count or say your um, pattern out loud if you need to. It always helps me to do it for some reason. So I just did one single crochet. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, Yarn over, pull through, and you have three loops again. Yarn over, pull through all three loops, and there's your single crochet two together. Chain one, stitch marker, turn your work. Next, okay, so for this row you need to have eight stitches total. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Row three says to single crochet two together. Next thing you do is to single crochet in the next six stitches. I'm going to go into my first single crochet, yarn over, pull through, 
Then I'm going to go into my next stitch, insert my hook, yarn over, pull through, three loops on, on my hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops on my hook. Now I need to single crochet in the next six stitches. One, Okay, so I'm just going to turn my work. And get ready for the next row. The next row says single crochet in the next five stitches. That's the first part of row four. The next part is single crochet two together. So let's single crochet in the next five stitches. One. Five. Now single crochet two together. That's one, two. Now let's put them together. So total for this row, we will have six stitches. And you can already see the angle. We're getting a corner. Now, chain one, stitch marker, turn your work. Row five says, single crochet two together, that's the first part, and then single crochet in the next four stitches. So I'm going to go into my first stitch, insert my hook, yarn over, pull through. Go into the next stitch, insert my hook, yarn over, pull through, and I have my three loops on my hook. Yarn over, pull through all three of those loops. Now. I'm going to single crochet in the next four stitches. Here's one, two, three, and four. That will give me five stitches in this row. And one thing Deidre does do is she puts in parentheses how many stitches you'll have after each row. Now chain one, stitch marker, Turn your work. Row six says single crochet in the next three stitches and single crochet two together. Single crochet in your first stitch. One. And it's supposed to do sing three single crochets total. So single crochet, that's our second one, and three single crochets. Next is single crochet two together. <clears throat> Insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through. Insert into the next stitch after that, yarn over, pull through. Three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through. And that gives us a total of four stitches. Chain one. Grab your stitch marker. Turn your work. Row seven, single crochet two together. Single crochet in the next two stitches. So 
insert into the first single crochet yarn over pull through insert into the next stitch after that yarn over pull through three loops on the hook yarn over pull through then I'm going to single crochet in the next two stitches one two chain one stitch marker turn row eight single crochet in the next one stitch then single crochet two together single crochet in one stitch there's my one now single crochet oops, this came apart now single crochet two together insert my hook into the next stitch yarn over pull through two loops insert into the stitch after that yarn over pull through three loops yarn over pull through all three loops chain one stitch marker turn my work row nine says single crochet two together so insert into the first single crochet yarn over pull through two loops insert into the next single crochet yarn over pull through three loops yarn over pull through all three loops then you are simply going to chain one and turn now look how lovely that is look at that angle beautiful beautiful Cheers! Okay, Didri did state you have now made half of your corner. To complete the corner and change the direction of your work by 90 degrees, make a beginning corner as instructed below. You will need to do this after every ending corner, otherwise your corners will be incomplete. So find your paper, that is the beginning corner. This is what your page for the beginning corner instructions is going to look like. It has this pink triangle up over here on the left. It has your green and your blue with the hook. Let me read through those directions quickly. Single crochet, chain two single crochet. For row, row one, that is the very first thing you do is single crochet, chain two single crochet. All in the only stitch of row nine of the ending corner indicated by an arrow in photo one. So for photo one, let's go to photo one. One is showing you where to single crochet, chain two single crochet. Right here, all in the only stitch of row nine of the ending corner. Here is the photo that you need to be looking at, the photos that you need to be looking at when doing your beginning corner. This is page 9 of 15 that has the instructions, and page 10 of 15 has the photos that you will be using. Okay, we just finished our ending square. Now I'm going to chain one, get my stitch marker. and turn my work. To make things easier, I moved my stitch markers. Well, I didn't move them, but I took them off and then put them back in. See how this one is between these two loops? 
Well, I took it out and just made it more seamless. So after I chain one, I'm going to turn my work and I'm going to work the first row of the beginning corner. It says to single crochet, chain two, not one, chain two, and then single crochet all in the only stitch of row nine of the ending corner, which happens to be right here. So this is going to be my stitch that I will be working in. This is the only stitch of row nine. So I'm going to insert my hook. Yarn over, pull through. Two loops on my hook. Yarn over, pull through. Then I'm going to chain two. One, two. And in that same row, in that same stitch, I'm going to insert my hook right where my marker is, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, and there I have my second single crochet. Single crochet, chain two, single crochet. Let's do that again in slow motion. I just turned my work and I'm going to insert my hook into the only stitch of row 9 yarn over, pull through, two loops yarn over, pull through and now I'm going to chain 2 1 Two, get a stitch marker, and in that same row where the marker is, I'm going to insert my hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. And you have single crochet, chain two, single crochet in the last row of your ending corner. And don't forget to put your marker through that little spot right there where your chain two, where your two chains are. I'm going to use purple this time. And now you're going to start working your second corner. Don't forget to look at your pictures on page 10 of 15. In the instructions, the second part of row 1 is to slip stitch into the next two rows of the ending corner. So in row 8, on the side of row 8 of the ending corner, you're going to insert your hook, yarn over, and pull directly through for a slip stitch. Then go to row 7 of your ending corner. On the side of row 7, insert your hook, yarn over, and pull directly through for a slip stitch. And there you have it row one of your beginning corner. Row two says skip the two slip stitches and single crochet increase in the next stitch. Single crochet in the chain two space. Chain one and turn. So we are going to turn our work, skip the two slip stitches, so skip our work on the side of the ending corner and go directly to the first stitch which is right here. This is our first stitch of row one. 
So insert your hook into the single crochet and single crochet increase, which means we're going to do two single crochets in this one single crochet right here. Then we're going to go to our chain 2 space, which is right here where our marker is, and single crochet in there. Insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. And now we have three stitches in our second row. Next direction is to chain one. And I'm going to add a stitch marker. And turn our work. Row 3 says single crochet in the next two stitches. So here's my stitch, my first stitch of row 2. I'm going to insert my hook and single crochet. I'm going to go to the next stitch of row 2 and insert my hook and yarn over, pull through yarn over, pull through. That is two stitches for row three. Part two of row three says single crochet increase in the next stitch. Here's my next stitch right here. You have to squeeze your hook right between those lines. Read between the lines. Insert your hook right there, and this is why it's so important that you don't do your work too tight. Don't have too much tension because if you do, you won't be able to insert your, insert your hook very well in this area. So insert, yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through for one single crochet. And because it's a single crochet increase, I have to do an additional single crochet in that same stitch. Voila. And you are done with row three. You should have four stitches in row three. One, two, three, four. The third part of row three is to slip stitch into the next two rows of the ending corner and turn. So we're going to skip this one where the marker is because we already worked that. And then we're going to go into this next spot right here because this is going to be our next row. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, and go straight in for a slip stitch. Go where your marker is insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, and go straight through for a slip stitch. And turn your work. Row 4 says, skip the two slip stitches. So we're going to skip these two slip stitches along the side. Single crochet increase in the next stitch. Here's our next stitch. It's a single crochet right here. And we're going to single crochet increase in it. So the, here's one, two. Two single crochets in one single crochet for our increase. Then it says single crochet in the next three stitches. One, two, three. So here's one single crochet. Two. And three. Chain one. Single crochet. 
stitch marker and turn our work. For row 4 we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 stitches. Row 5 says single crochet in the next 4 stitches. Insert into the first single crochet. There's one. Again, in this tight little space right here, we are going to insert our hook. Yarn over, pull through. And because this is going to be an increase, we're going to put an additional single crochet right there for two single crochets in one single crochet. We should have six stitches all together in row five. Part three of row five says slip stitch into the next two rows. So skip this spot where we have our marker. Insert into the next row, into the side of the next row. And you can tell which one it is because it has this little space. You see that V, that upside down V? That always helps me find it. And then it looks like I have the loops right there. I'm going to go into this next spot right here because this is going to be our next row. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, and go straight in for a slip stitch. Go where your marker is, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, and go straight through for a slip stitch. And turn your work. Row 6 of your beginning corner says, skip the two slip stitches, so skip these two slip stitches on the side of the ending corner single crochet increase in the next stitch. So I'm going to come right here, this first stitch of row 5. I'm going to yarn over, pull through, and because I'm increasing, I'm going to do two in that same stitch, two single crochets in one stitch. There we have it. The next direction for that row says single crochet in the next five stitches. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Single crochet five. Chain one. Stitch marker. Turn my work. Row 7 says single crochet in the next six stitches. That's the very first thing we do. So find my first stitch, which is over here. One. And a six. Here's my next stitch. See this line right here? That's a good indicator so I can know where my next stitch is that I need to go into. So insert my hook, yarn over, pull through, and because this is an increase. I need to do a second single crochet in that same single crochet in that same stitch. And then I need to slip stitch into the next two rows of the ending corner. So skip my marker, come right here in the next one after the marker, insert my hook, yarn over, pull through for a slip stitch, go where my marker is insert yarn over pull through 
for a slip stitch. Don't forget to turn your work. My next row says skip the two slip stitches, single crochet increase in the next stitch. So here's my stitch right here. Yarn over, pull through for my first single crochet. And because it's an increase, don't forget to do your second one in the same single crochet. There's my first two. The third direction for row eight is single crochet in the next seven stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And seven. Chain one. Marker. And turn work. Row nine. Single crochet in the next eight stitches. Remember that these all have three different steps per row. So I'm going to single crochet in my first single crochet of this row. That's one. Eight. The next direction is single crochet increase in the next stitch. So here's my stitch, insert hook, one, two for my increase. Slip stitch into the first row of the ending corner. So here's the first row where my marker is, the first row of the ending corner. And I'm going to create a slip stitch. The last direction of row nine is to chain one and turn. So you have your first square, your ending corner, and your beginning corner. Now is a good time for you to take out those middle markers that you don't need anymore. Here is the front seam, and here is the back seam. Deidre says, you have successfully completed one corner and changed the direction of the work by 90 degrees. You will now need to change it by 90 degrees again so that you are able to work into the side of the first square. Stop. And take a break, do whatever you have to do, stretch. Get your, I have my 12 gallon cup of tea that I've still been sipping on. Uh, get yours if you need it. Potty break, everything. Because we're about to get started on the beginning corner again. Excuse me, the ending corner again. Okay, still with me? Brace yourselves because this is when the trickiest part comes in. We just did a beginning corner and we are immediately going to go into an ending corner and we're going to create like a little V. Let me get my diagram. Okay, so we did our first square, our ending corner, and our beginning corner. And now we're going to go right back into our ending corner. Okay, so first square, ending corner, beginning corner, and then our ending corner again. This is what we're about to do. We just did this, about to do this. Alrighty, okay. Here we go again, round two of the ending corner. This is page, let's see, eight of 15. We're about to do it right now, right now. Row one says to single crochet two together, 
single crochet in the next eight stitches and then chain one and turn. We will end up with nine stitches. So I'm going to insert my hook, yarn over, pull through with two loops on my hook. I'm going to go to the next stitch, insert my hook, yarn over, pull through, end up with three loops on my hook, yarn over, pull through. Those two stitches become one. Now I'm going to single crochet in the next eight. One. Seven, eight, and I forgot to put my marker over here, which I'm going to do now. chain one after my first row marker turn my work row two says single crochet in the next seven stitches single crochet two together chain one and turn you'll end up with eight stitches so in my first stitch I'm going to start my stitches single crochet one and seven. Now single crochet two together. Single crochet in the first one, two loops. Single crochet in the second one, you'll end up with three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all three of those loops. Chain one, stitch marker, Turn row three, single crochet two together, single crochet in the next six stitches, chain one, and turn. You end up with seven stitches. So single crochet two together, there's two loops, go to the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, pull through all three loops, two into one. Six. Let's see. I have my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and seven stitches. Chain one. You need your marker. Turn your work. Row four. Single crochet in the next five stitches single crochet two together, chain one and turn, you end up with six. Okay, so single crochet, here's my first one, one, five, my next direction is single crochet two together. Here's one with my two loops into the next stitch. Yarn over, pull through. I have three loops. Yarn over, pull all the way through all three. And then chain one, stitch marker, and turn my work. Row five single crochet two together, single crochet in the next four stitches, chain one and turn. You end up with five stitches. So for my single crochet two together I'm going to insert, yarn over, pull through, two loops on my hook. Go into the next stitch, yarn over, I mean insert my hook, yarn over, pull through, I end up with three loops on my hook. Yarn over, pull through, And now I have to go in for my single crochet in the next four stitches.
Three, four. Now you have to chain one, get your marker, marker, turn my work, let's see that was one, two, three, four, five, row six, single crochet in the next three stitches, single crochet two together. So I'm going to single crochet in the first single crochet. One, single crochet two together, one, two, yarn over, go through all three loops, and there's my single crochet two together. Chain one. Turn. Row 7 says single crochet two together, single crochet in the next two stitches, chain one and turn. You're going to end up with three stitches for that row. I'm going to yarn over, pull through, and end up with two loops on my hook. Go to the next stitch, insert my hook, yarn over, pull through, end up with three loops on my hook, yarn over, pull through my two becomes one. And then I'm going to single crochet in the next two stitches. Here's one and two. Chain one, get my stitch marker. Turn my work. Row 8 says to single crochet in the next stitch and then to single crochet two together, chain one and turn. You end up with two stitches for row 8. I'm going to go to my first stitch and single crochet. Then I'm going to single crochet two together. Insert my hook, two loops, Insert my hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through three loops, yarn over, pull through all three loops. Chain one, stitch marker, turn. Row nine says single crochet two, two, two together, chain one and turn. You end up with one stitch for row nine. So, go into my first stitch, yarn over, pull through, I end up with two loops. My next stitch, insert my hook, yarn over, pull through, I end up with three loops. Yarn over, pull through all three loops, and there's my angle. Chain one, and turn. Chain one and done. The next thing we have to do is go back again and do a beginning corner. So grab your paper for the beginning corner. Next, we will be doing the beginning corner again, aka first beginning corner or subsequent beginning corner on the pattern and it's also page 9 of 15. Really pay attention to your pattern and your work. Drink more tea! Welcome back! Hey! Let's do Frank Hey! Hey! Ho! Okay, hopefully I haven't lost y'all. Just hang in there. We're getting through this together. Right now we're about to do our subsequent beginning corner. You've gotten through some really tricky parts. Drink some more tea. Let's keep this train a rolling.
At the bottom of this page, which is 10 of 15, Deidre says, these corners are exactly the same as the first beginning corner, but the slip stitch at the end of row nine will fall in a row that already contains a slip stitch. When you have completed your subsequent beginning corner, make a middle section as instructed below. From that point on, each beginning corner will be followed by a middle section. Okay. We have our chain one, we put our marker, and now it's time to turn our work. Again, with this beginning corner, this subsequent beginning corner, we are going to begin by working in, oops, working in this row right here, where our marker is. Can you see that? that space right there, that little in between, that little triangle, that's where we're going to go. So insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, we're going to create the single crochet. So there's our first single crochet for row one. Then we're going to chain two, one, two. Don't forget to put your marker where the chain two is. And in that same stitch where you put your first single crochet, you're going to put an additional single crochet. There we go. Now we're going to pass up our marker and go into the next row and do a slip stitch in the side of our ending corner. So yarn over, pull through, and go straight into the slip stitch. and then go where our next marker is. See that spot right there? It's a good thing our work isn't too tight because now we can see clearly where we need to go. So insert my hook, yarn over, pull through, and go straight in for the slip stitch. The next part of that is to turn our work. Row two of the beginning corner or subsequent beginning corner says, Skip the two slip stitches. Single crochet increase in the next stitch. Single crochet in the chain two space, chain one, and turn. So we're going to skip what we just did on the side right here and go straight to our stitch that we created. So insert into the stitch and do single crochet increase, which means you're going to do two single crochets in the same stitch. One, two. You see right here where your marker is? That's where you have your chain two space and that's where you need to go and insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, and create an additional single crochet. That is row two of your beginning corner chain one and let's use yellow again turn your work row three of the beginning corner says single crochet in the next two stitches that's part one part two is single crochet increase in the next stitch Part three is to slip stitch into the next two rows of the ending corner and turn. You'll end up with four stitches. So I'm going to single crochet in the next two stitches. Here's one. Go into the next stitch. Create another single crochet, that's two. And then single crochet in the next stitch. Here's my stitch right here. I'm going to single crochet and because it's a single crochet increase I'm going to do two single crochets in this one stitch.
My next instruction is to slip stitch into the next two rows of the ending corner. So I'm going to skip this one where my marker is because we already went into that single crochet. Go into my next slot of my next row and slip stitch. One. Go right here where my marker is and slip stitch. Two slip stitches. Turn my work. Row 4 says skip your slip stitches and single, cro single crochet increase in the next stitch, which happens to be this one right here, right next to the marker. Insert my hook. Here's one single crochet, and because it's an increase, I need two in the same stitch. Here's my second one, and now I'm going to single crochet in the next three stitches. One, two, three. Chain one, turn my work. Row five is to single crochet in the next four stitches, single crochet increase in the next stitch, and slip stitch into the next two rows of the ending corner and turn. You're going to end up with six stitches. So here we go. Single crochet in the next four stitches. One. And four. Don't forget your marker like I did. Next is single crochet increase in the next stitch. So single crochet, one, two in the same stitch. My next instruction is to slip stitch into the next two rows of the ending corner and turn. I'm gonna skip this where my marker is, go into my next row right here, slip stitch, one, there's my first slip stitch, and then go into this slot where my marker is for my second slip stitch. Turn my work. Row six, skip the two slip stitches, single crochet increase, so one single crochet and two single crochets in my first stitch. After you do your single crochet increase, you're going to do your single crochets in the next five stitches, chain one and turn. You should have seven stitches. So I just did two, going in for my third and seven in my last stitch of this row. Now I'm going to chain one and not forget my marker this time and turn my work. Row 7 says, single crochet in the next 6 stitches, so that's what I'll do now, 1, and 6. The next direction is to single crochet increase in the next stitch, so here is my next one. Push your hook in, yarn over, pull through, and single crochet. Then add a second one for my second single crochet in that same stitch. My next direction is to slip stitch in the next two rows of the ending corner and turn. I'm not going to go right here where my marker is, I'm going to go into the next row, insert my hook, yarn over and pull all the way through for my slip stitch. Again, I'm going to go right here where this marker is, yarn over and go all the way in for the slip stitch. For row 8, it says skip the two slip stitches, single crochet. Okay. Let's see. So I'm turning my work going into the first single crochet 
and doing a single crochet increase. So here I have one, two in the first stitch of that row of row seven. And then the next thing to do is single crochet in the next seven stitches. One, six, and seven. Chain one. We should have nine stitches on in that row. Put my marker, turn my work. As for row nine, we are going to single crochet in the next eight stitches. So single crochet in your first stitch. That gives me one single crochet. Now I have to do seven more. Row nine, I have to do eight single crochets. Here's my, if I can get it. Here's my eighth one. And then my next direction is to single crochet increase in the next stitch. I'm gonna do that right here. First single crochet and second single crochet in the same stitch. Slip stitch into the first row of the ending corner, which is right here where the marker is. Chain one and turn. So what do you think so far? It's starting to look good, right? Give yourself a pat on the back. You're almost there. Hooray, you did it! Hashtag crochet goals. Okay, now that you got past the trickiest part of all, we're gonna start with our middle section and go on from there. Let's see. So we just got through all of this. So we're gonna start on our middle section and then we will start going across where our foundation chain is, the part where we work over that. So be prepared for that. But it's not gonna be as difficult as all of this. So bear with me. Here's the next section we will be working on. It is this middle section right here. It's in purple, so I will be working with my purple yarn. At the bottom, she says the foundation chain doesn't count as a row and you will work over it to minimize the foundation of holes. The directions for the middle section say, skip the first stitch, which will be the slip stitch, okay? Single crochet in the next 10 stitches, chain one and turn. You will have 10 stitches in your row. So here I'm going to stitch, single crochet in my first stitch, one, And chain one. And now time for my marker. Turn my work. Row two says so single crochet in the next ten stitches, slip stitch in the second, slip stitch in the next two rows of the first square and turn. You will end up with ten in the row, so. Here's the first single crochet, nine and 10. Slip stitch in the next two rows Okay, so let's go where our marker is, and this is where keeping the main goal in mind comes in handy. Go between your markers to the next hole right here. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, 
all the way through for a slip stitch. Turn your work, turn your work, do not chain one. And then go in for another 10 single crochets. One. Two. Nine. And 10. Chain one. Get my marker. And turn my work. Ten. One. And here is where you're going to put your tenth one. Again, this is why you don't want your work too tight. You want to be able to put your hook in there. Now I'm going to insert my hook where this marker is, slip stitch, insert my hook in the slot after my marker, slip stitch, do not chain one and turn your work. You're going to do this for the remainder of your rows until you have a full 10 rows. Again, just like when I work into the sides of my corners, I need to insert my hook into this tiny spot. And to this hole right here where my marker is, slip stitch, one, the next hole, nine, and here's my tenth hole for my tenth single crochet. And now it says, single crochet in the next 10 stitches, slip stitch in the next row. So I'm going to slip stitch in my next row. This will be the first row of the first square, not the foundation chain. So right here, not where my hook is, but right before it. See photo 10. The foundation chain doesn't count as a row and you will work over it to minimize the formation of holes. Chain one. Okay, so chain one and turn. What comes after this, you might ask? Your ending corner. I'm going to do my ending corner and I will meet you right back after I finish doing that. Don't forget your ending corner paper looks like this, page 8 of 15. So do your two single crochet two together right here, single crochet the next eight stitches, and you'll end up with nine stitches in your row. Meet you back in a bit. Okay everyone, I just finished my ending corner, my subsequent ending corner. This is my one, two, my third corner. And now we're on to beginning corner again. So that is page 9 of 15. Looks like this. Get that out again and work on that. I'll be working on it and then I'll meet you back right here.
Okay, I just finished the last row of my beginning corner. And now I'm going to use my slip stitch and insert it into the first row of the ending corner. And I'm going to use the slip stitch to connect those two. You always want to connect those two your ending corner and your beginning corner before going on to your middle section. And that's part of keeping the bigger picture in mind. You want to keep those lined up. Remember I said you wanted your square? You wanted these two corners to create a square of their own? Well, there you have it. Okay, moving on to our next middle section. So let's get the paper for that. This is page 12 of 15. This says, now work another ending corner as instructed above. I also added end beginning corner because I think she forgot to type that in. We're going to be working on our second middle section. For the second middle section, you will be making your slip stitches into the stitches of the first row of the first, squ first square, working over the foundation chain. First row, skip the first stitch, which will be the slip stitch. Single crochet in the next 10 stitches. Chain one and end turn. Okay, here is our first square here in blue, and here is our foundation chain that we'll, we will be working over. We're going to start working on this part right where my nail is. Not this part, but this part. And see how everything is pretty much aligned? My squares begin and end at the, pretty much the same places. So do my triangles, but they are not exact. So keep that in mind before you beat yourself up over it. And here's my triangle right here. Here's that V that I made and it formed a triangle. And then you have your two triangles on the sides. So this is all keeping the bigger picture in mind that helps keep things aligned. Now I'm going to do my second middle section right here. Just a little reminder, do not forget to do your chain one after each section. So you did your chain one after your beginning corner and then you're going to turn your work. It says skip the first stitch which will be the slip stitch. So you're going to be working into the blue and here's your slip stitch right here. It says skip the first stitch which will be the slip stitch single crochet in the next 10 stitches. Chain one and turn. Okay, so I'm going to turn my work and I'm going to work across this pink right here. My first single crochet, that's one. Nine, ten. That was row two. Row 3 says skip the 2 slip stitches, single crochet in the next 10 stitches, chain 1 and turn. Again, we are not working in our foundation chain so that, here's our foundation chain right here. That is not what we are working on, working with. We are going to come in here instead in our first row 
and slip stitch one in our next spot two turn our work and go for another 10. And this little tight spot is where my 10 is going to go. Just like before. Okay, I'm going to look for my next hole, which is going to be here for my slip stitch in my row one of my first square. Here is my next hole. I'm going to turn my work and this little tight spot is where my 10 is going to go just like before okay I'm gonna look for my next hole which is going to be here for my slip stitch in my row one of my first square here is my next hole. Okay. I'm going to turn my work. Single crochet in the, in the next 10 stitches. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten. Slip stitch in the last stitch of the first row of the first square, which will be right here, not down here, not where your slip knot is. But up here. Can you see that hole? Not here, but here. Create a slip stitch, chain one, and turn. Turn your work because you will do your ending corner, after your ending corner, a beginning corner after your beginning corner, your middle section again. Single crochet in the, in the next 10 stitches. So here's one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, 
eight, nine, ten. Slip stitch in the last stitch of the first row of the first square, which will be right here. Not down here, not where your slip knot is, but up here. Can you see that hole? Not here, but here. Create a slip stitch chain one and turn. Turn your work because you will do your ending corner, after your ending corner, a beginning corner, after your beginning corner, your middle section again. And there you have it. You just did the beginning part of the 10 stitch blanket. Once you have this section down, you can do the rest of the blanket. Like I said, you'll do the ending corner, beginning corner, which will create a square right here. Then you will do your middle section. And each middle section will get longer and longer by 10 rows. So you'll have 10, you have 10, 10, and 10. Your next middle section will be 20. The next middle section after that will be 20 again. After that will be 30 rows another 30, 40 rows, another 40, and so on and so forth. Here's the next diagram. So like I said, it's 10, 10, 10, 20, 20, 30, 30. And after each middle section, you have your ending, beginning, middle section, ending, beginning, middle section, ending, beginning, middle section, ending beginning once you've mastered that or feel that you have mastered it then you can get creative I just did this one to show you how creative you can get this is the first square right here this is the ending section the ending corner beginning ending beginning and your next middle section right here but I thought it was fun to use this section to create a V. See how it's going up like that? And just have fun with it. So I do have a video coming up on changing the colors because then you can get fun and kooky and crazy with the corners and get as creative as you want to. And that's a wrap. It is a wrap. We made it. It's been a long journey. It's been a long road. It's been a long video. But we did it. And you can say that you conquered the 10 stitch blanket after this. Um, I really hope you found this video very helpful. I hope you found it informative. I hope it answered a lot of questions for you that you may have had when you went to read the pattern. And I hope you learned something today that you didn't know yesterday. I'd like to thank all the people who helped make this video, helped make it possible. To my cousin Lori, shout out to Lori and Chester for, and Matthew, for being great cousins and supportive cousins and watching the Cubs while I made this video. To Papa Bear for all of his love and support, for helping me to make this video, helping me to not cook and clean, and running around, drawing my bath after this. So wonderful. And to Deidre and Frankie, thank you so much Deidre for converting this pattern so that I can personally use it. And for Frankie for creating the pattern, period. Let's see, um, please, please, please remember all the info I gave you. If not, just play back the video. The video is always there to help out. And let's see, 
Oh yes, and if you could please submit all of your wonderful pictures of blankets that you've created from this pattern and anything that has come from this video, I would really appreciate it. I would really love seeing everything, seeing all of the blankets or whatever you decide to do with it. And now it's time for me to rest. Thanks again. I hope you enjoy this video. Toodles. This has been Mama Bear with a Daily Dash of Life. And as always, don't forget to spice up yours. May God bless you. Thanks for watching. To subscribe, click my watermark and click any video icon for more videos or to start a playlist. Check out bonus footage at Instagram and Twitter at a daily dash of life. Toodles!